Hi everyone and welcome. It's Elizabeth and I want to do a reading and an energy check-in for you for the last few days of May. So the 28th through the 31st of May. Uh, it's uh, Memorial Day weekend coming up in the U.S., so a lot of people will be traveling, gathering, celebrating. Uh, some of you may be working or just taking it easy, so whatever that is for you, just to get you some messages and guidance as we go into this weekend and see what Spirit wants to say to you, the highest and best messages. So I hope that you're all doing well, and uh, if some of you got to see the lunar eclipse, I actually slept right through it, so... <laughs> Um, but, uh, I live in, in Arizona and Sedona and I know that it was visible here. So since I've lived here, I actually have seen, uh, a few eclipses. So, uh, I just slept through this one. I, I needed the sleep. So, okay. Um, but if any of you saw it, I wonder how it was. So feel free to leave a comment and I welcome all of you. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, angels. And thank you to the guides for being here. Messages for the collective. Highest and best messages for the weekend ahead. I'm using Angels and Ancestors Oracle Deck by Kyle Gray. And we'll start off with a message from this deck. See what we have for everybody. Ooh, beautiful. Father Sky, trust in the unknown. Uh, and that is, um, and let's get one more, and the peacekeeper. Beautiful. I really love this. Let go of the need to be right. So that's a big one, right? And at the bottom is autumn, releasing the old, okay, to make room for the new. So I feel like that was the energy uh, of the lunar eclipse. You know, it is about doing some releasing and shedding old skin and just kind of letting, um, letting go of what you don't need anymore, okay? Letting go of the things that you don't need. They've served their purpose. So it feels like there's definitely been some lessons that have been learned with Peacekeeper coming out. She's holding the peace pipe, right? So it's ceremonial. It's like um, an initiation, perhaps, that you feel like as though you've been through where it's too exhausting trying to prove a point all the time. Letting go of that need to be right, just, um, you know, to keep the peace. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you don't have a purpose. It doesn't mean that you don't have a voice or anything like that. But sometimes it's about discernment and knowing when and where uh, to sort of just like remain quiet and hold a vibration that's a little bit higher. And we have Father Sky. So this is, you know, in Native American culture and in indigenous cultures, the sky was the father. Uh, and here we see like a very, very high perspective there with the eagle and also the energy of lightning. So um, sudden revelations and things sort of like happening very quickly, like in, the, in a flash. So change and movement here with the sky. Actually, before I... Um, I was clearing the deck and usually I use uh, sage or sweetgrass or, you know, incense or sometimes crystals to clear the deck. But lately I've been using sound to clear the deck. So I actually was using this very small heart chakra singing bowl um, to clear the deck. So using sound and um, a few of the messages that I was getting uh, was to go deeper so as within go deeper and then the other message i was getting was aim higher so going deeper and aiming higher and uh, it's interesting because the energy of peace uh, often almost all the time is something that is very very internal very internal so that's going really deep and then aiming really really high higher um, so it really is about i'm feeling this energy of um, setting our sights higher not settling uh, for less uh, than what we really desire, what we really want, uh, and also that there is an energy of mystery around everything, really and truly. Uh, we can sit here and look at energy and perhaps look down future timelines of what may be possible for us, but the truth is, is that there is um, the mystery and that sort of surrendering to that and that things are always changing with that lightning there, uh, and that the universe has a plan, God has a plan, you have a plan, and it's written like inside of your soul's blueprint. 
and the energy of the bald eagle just being it's such a higher perspective and it can see you know the eagle can see for miles and miles and miles it has that really um strong vision so also about our own inner vision okay um but i was hearing go deeper within and aim higher so let's get some messages uh, from the tarot i'm going to use the moon child tarot tonight um and that is uh by danielle noel since we just had this lunar eclipse uh and when i open the deck i see the hanged man with the two of pentacles so really sometimes like we have really important things uh, to make decisions about or we're juggling a lot in our life. And sometimes it's just about surrendering into the unknown uh, with that hanged man energy there. So a beautiful energy of surrender and also uh, a shift of perspective, a shift of totally like changing our perspective about whatever that is for you. Perspectives changing, a deepening of your wisdom and um, a deepening of your consciousness beautiful so we have sagittarius energy coming out so we have uh the knight of wands with the page of swords and the eight of cups uh so sag energy here this is that full moon that we just had and and the moon is in sagittarius right now and this is the moon child tarot so the energy of the moon is really coming out and that sagittarius which you know, it's a night, uh, fast, very fast moving energy. Sagittarius is about exploration, adventure, expansion, growth, uh, and it's fire energy. So really wanting to um, like ignite something within ourselves. Page of Swords coming out, you know, oftentimes it's about like learning, really learning. Um, it's a younger energy and about like um, gaining, gaining more truth from within ourselves. And then we have the Eight of Cups here. So we could just really be walking away from energies that are um, of a lesser vibration. Eight of Cups is where we do leave something behind. It's things that just aren't satisfying us. There's a lot of disappointment in the Eight of Cups because it's something that um, we really, you know, would have liked to have... Um, you know, grown into something beautiful, but with the Eight of Cups, it's where we finally succumb to um, the idea that it's just not going to work out and that we have to move on to something else. And that something else is the Ninth Cup, which is the Wish. Beautiful card here, right? So, um, and I love how this water is just like this gorgeous turquoise color. So it's an ascension energy here. And that's actually what I'm feeling. Uh, so turning on some kind of a truth and with the page of swords and the knight of wands, you know, this is, um, it's, it's where we haven't yet mastered something in our life. You know, it's where, uh, we are on a mission. It's where we are uh, a seeker of something. So there is something that we're seeking right now. And it's, um, it's something that, um, will, will help us grow ultimately because there's no king and queen coming out and it, there's no major arcana. So it's showing also because there are lesser arcanas and court cards where like, um, it's things that we can affect you know, and, um, and it may feel like there's just these huge universal energies, energies of fate. But I think what the guides and spirit wants us to know is that uh, we can really affect our life in a big, big way right now. And we have the Ace of Cups. Yes. So, uh, so this is what the reward is. You know, the cup is given to us by the hand of God, essentially. And it's because of our hard work. It's because with that hanged man, like we've sacrificed something. So the eight of cups of like, you know, leaving something behind, uh, the reward is the ace. But with the aces, they're just the opportunity. It holds the potentiality for the whole suit of cups. And cups is heart space, wishes, dreams, hope. It's love. You know, it's emotional fulfillment. It's uh, feeling joy, feeling happy, uh, and being in love with whatever that is, in love with life. So this gorgeous cup here uh, is sort of a reward for following passion and uh, perhaps sacrificing some things. It's Eight of Cups is very painful. You know, it can be a painful energy. It's not easy. Um, and it's Scorpio energy. So that's that going deep that I was feeling, going deep uh, and not being afraid of that because uh, it's Pluto energy and Pluto is about transformation. So something's transforming here. Um, 
and we may have like a new insight with that page of swords and then the lightning of father sky the lightning of father sky now for some of you with this peacekeeper here there really has been a lot of conflict arguing fighting you know and it's a page uh and so it's like this um very like um small energy that's carrying this very very big sword and perhaps uh the page shouldn't have a sword so big and um also with the peacekeeper it's like this energy of just wanting peace you know really just wanting peace like no more conflict you know just wanting to be at peace and with the knight of wands it's also this energy and space of wanting to be set free. Sagittarian energy is very, very freedom loving. So about like just wanting to get on the horse and go. I always say that with the Knight of Wands, wanting to get on the horse and go. Uh, but a lot of it may be scary because, um, you know, in trusting the unknown, like, well, what happens after that? What happens after, um, you know, I journey uh, away from the, and leave these eight cups behind? What else happens? Um, the thing is, is that you don't really leave the eight cups behind. Uh, they're still with you because this is emotions. You know, this is stuff that um, once something is in your heart, it's always there. So it's not like you're losing it at all. It becomes a part of you. And um, going deeper is the opportunity to integrate all of these, like each of these cups being a lesson. And then when we add the ace of cups, it becomes the nine cups. And the nine cups is almost, you can think of it as like your emotional trophy case. We typically see the nine of cups with, you know, the man and he's like this, there's a curtain behind him. And also behind him are all nine cups. It's as if he has each of them uh, on a shelf because he's earned them. So there is this energy of earning these cups of earning. Um, it's like a wisdom that you have in your heart. Um, but it doesn't come easily and the same thing with the peacekeeper of letting go of the need to be right you know she's holding this peace pipe and she's been initiated to hold it somebody didn't just hand it to her um with the page of swords it's like somebody just handed this page of swords she picked it up like she didn't necessarily earn this you know um but it's still her rite of passage it's still her right uh to have it so um, anyway, with this peacekeeper, it feels like uh, these experiences have been a sort of initiation for you. And we see the white buffalo there. So this massive land beast that was held so sacred, you know, to tribal people, indigenous cultures, and um, it provided nourishment and food. It represented their connection to the land, uh, to the living soil, uh, their connection to God. And um, so that's what I'm seeing here is definitely an initiation and the father energy is here, father sky. So um, there's, you know, a loving energy that's with us. You could say even looking down over us, like really keeping an eye on us. Uh, and it may feel like very stormy, you know, that lightning, <clears throat> it strikes and uh, you never know where it's going to strike or when and what it's going to do. So, okay, let's get a few more cards. Bottom of the deck was the fool. So, uh, uh, yes, it, it's it's scary, you know, leaping like this. It's very, very scary. Uh, that's why we see the dog in the fool, because the dog is an aspect of her soul or his soul that's sort of um, like the warning, like, ah, you know, and the, the dog in, in this deck is like they're looking first. Um, trying to protect the fool, but the fool just goes on instinct. So also about following your instincts right now, really and truly following your instincts, uh, trusting that, you know, of what you're feeling right now is legit. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Beautiful. Another eight. You cannot make this up. You can't make this up. Okay, you guys, you've got three aces here. So Ace of Cups, the reward. Ace of Wands, spirit, passion, drive, creativity, something new. You ready for this? Ace of Swords, clarity, higher wisdom, higher knowledge. You are connected to the divine. You are connected. 
So uh, this is a big energy because it is aces. See that pointing up? It's like you're connecting. You have the opportunity to connect. You have the opportunity to grow whatever you want in this physical world, the Empress. It is truly amazing because now we have Father Sky and the Empress. So this is the father and the mother. She would be like Mother Earth, Father Sky, Mother Earth. You have a, a very loving energy that's with you, the father and the mother. Uh, it's going to come from this, letting go of the need to be right. But she looks very sure of herself. She's not cowering. You know, she's got this uh, white buffalo behind her, this massive land animal, a symbol of strength. So she's strong. Uh, she can let go of these quarrels of this page energy, right? This page of swords, these quarrels. Um, I'm feeling for a lot of you, it's pettiness. Uh, it could even be the energy of someone who really wants to keep you trapped here in this Eight of Cups. And um, the opportunities are all there, but it's about what you're going to do with them. So Ace of Cups, Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords. I honestly, I don't know that I've ever seen this before in a reading that I've done with just seven tarot cards out. Look at these together. This is your opportunity. Uh, and this is sort of like, you know, post lunar eclipse. And I feel like, you know, I'm in Sedona. And so I, you know, here it's like I can tap into the energies. Uh, maybe you're not, you're not here yet. You know, maybe you're still in this um, energy of quarrel or it could be inner conflict. Uh, and for a lot, you know, a lot of times it's inner conflict and then it's manifesting in the outside world with other people, whatever that looks like for you. These are all opportunities. You have to take them. It's a yes or no question. Yes or no. It's really that simple. So apply that to your life. It's amazing. It's cups, it's wands, it's swords. And then the card that came out with those was the Empress. So that is its Taurian energy, Venus energy. So even Libra to some degree, but it's things in the physical, it's earth energy. Uh, so you can grow things if you have to love them and nurture them. And perhaps um, maybe you haven't felt nurtured in a real way. Maybe you haven't felt uh, like anything around you was expanding or that it, like you can grow to a certain amount and then it's there's a block. So I'm feeling a removal of blockages with these three aces. It's incredible. It really is. Uh, and this is going to be the hardest part is this eight of cups, really and truly. And the eights, when they're turned on their sides, they form the sign of infinity. So this can be things that you've gone back to time and time again, even if it's uh, the same job, a, a different job, a different person, but it feels like a lot of the things from your past. It's where the eights are where you repeat the same thing over and over again until you master it. So um, I'm feeling like this energy of, um, that's what I said in the beginning, we have a knight in the page. So it's like, you haven't yet mastered something, but it's there. So the eights again, where we, where we repeat so that we can master something. And, and spirit is like really, really, really here with three aces. Um, and I'm feeling like, let's just get uh, two more. Okay, because I want to I want it to be a complete nine card block. So thank you, spirit. This is so beautiful. Thank you so much for these messages for everybody. Can I have two more cards, please? Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 I see it. I see it. Thank you. Thank you, spirit. Okay. Three of wands. So yes, this is about uh, growing things in the physical. It goes along with the empress. So we have empress is number three in the major arcana. And then we have the three of wands. So a lesser arcana of the empress. So growth, manifestation. This is where, uh, you know, you, you have plans. You've been working at them. You've been, you've made a decision. Like, you know what it is that you want. You have a very clear idea of what you want. Uh, and it's about like how to do it. And also you may feel like, um, you know, it's, it's almost there. Like it's almost there. Uh, you can almost feel it or reach it. So it's coming. These are, these are cards of success. It's coming. Now the last card out is the four of cups. 
So this is where there is a blockage in a sense. Uh, this is where, um, you know, you could be feeling like, but what if I missed an opportunity because it's coming out under the eight of cups? What if I missed an opportunity? You know, I don't want to miss out on something. Uh, and what spirit's telling you is just to get aligned and stay in your truth. Okay. Get aligned and stay in your truth that everything is going to work out. Um, this is also about meditation and contemplation, the Four of Cups. So it's definitely a nod to uh, relaxing and pausing, okay? Relaxing and pausing and really, really taking this Ace of Swords and getting very clear, speaking your truth and communicating your truth in, in a way that is just calm and aligned and you know holds this vibration so you guys i will leave you with that i hope that you enjoyed this have a great rest of the month happy memorial day to those in the states i will see you all soon take good care okay namaste